Without visions, our aspiration would be to no need, and our hope for a better future would be an illusion. Our guest understands that and takes a step toward his vision each and every day. He is a young entrepreneur, translator, he is an English teacher, and he is also the director of a vocational school. Obviously, we are going to lean toward his teaching career, but we are also going to talk about the other activities that he is doing in life. Dear listeners, welcome to the episode 13 of Raul the Teacher's Class, and our guest for today is Yusel Kalisme. You are now listening to Raul the Teacher's Class, a podcast made for the EFL learners and with the EFL learners. This episode is brought to you by HBP English Club, where learners of all ages and all levels can improve their English. Join them for the 2020 and become a member for only 125 goods a month using the code Raul the Teacher's Class. For more information, Contact them on Facebook, HBP English Club, or call them on 4311-2830. Hi there, and welcome to another episode of Raul, the Teacher's Class. This is a podcast made for the EFL learners and with the EFL learners, and I aim to teach them English and to teach them in English. And today, as I mentioned in the introduction, here in the studio with me, you sell. How are you, friend? Uh, hey, Raul. I'm good. How are you doing? Doing good. Good to have you in the studio. Thank you. How is everything for you, my friend? Things are good. So we just like chilling and see how things are going. Okay. So we're going to go with um, this short interview with you. We're going to tell a little bit more about yourself to my audience and to, to, to everyone else who is going to listen to the podcast eventually in the future. So you are an English teacher. Yeah, sure. You are a translator. Sure. You are the director of an, of a vocational Absolutely, school. Absolutely. So really. you have a lot of qualifications, though. Yeah. Okay. So, but we're gonna focus first of all. Um, we're gonna be interested in your career as an English teacher. Mm -hmm. So first of all, English. How did everything start with English? Why did you decide to learn English, though? Sure. Uh, learning English for me is always a great pleasure because I remember when I was. Uh, 13, 12 years old, I was very interested about learning English. And then I was always happy when I see people speaking English in front of me. It was like a, a great, a great thing for me. And then I decided to learn English at this time. And then I remember when I was in uh, fifth grade, I had in mind to be a, a doctor, but like uh, in medicine, like taking care of people and, and medicine and stuff like that and then right? uh, yeah sure and uh, by the time that I was in seventh uh, grade I decided to, to, to change my my vision and the vision was like to be a doctor but in languages like speaking a lot of languages and started learning English and then I really like English I like when people are speaking English and the, th the way that they sound and then I do appreciate that okay so how was that how was that experience so how was it as an English learner so did you encounter difficulties so how was everything tell us well uh, learning English for me was uh, very hard because it's not it's not a very easy thing so so you need to um, I mean sacrifice yourself a lot for learning it because learning English is not only English learning something if you want to do something in life you need mm -hmm. to sacrifice yourself for it so uh, I remember when I was learning English I could not even eat like after after school because so I was going to, uh, yeah to school, after start, school you were starving. after school in the morning and then go <laughs> go into to learn English in the afternoon it was like uh, it was very tough for me so it was not a good experience and after this people like uh, I got a lot of friends in my neighborhood so uh, we were so close after I decided to learn English and go go to learn English I was like I liked playing football a lot and then after a certain time I never played soccer and then I, my time was only for for English yeah and then so you put some time. Oh, sure. Right? I just like create some time in order to learn to learn it. And then I remember after school when I go to when I go to learn English, it was like a big deal for me because imagine that you go to school in the morning, you 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 eat a little thing in the morning, like you have some breakfast in the morning and the afternoon. So but it's not going to learn English. Oh, Empty my. stomach. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it <laughs> oh. was like a bad experience. I don't know. As it is 
said that we move toward what we consistently see. So what I want to ask you now is, while you were going through all of this, um, did you always have that, you know, picture, that vision in front of you? And did that help you to move forward? Sure. So, um, you know, so you, you, you can do something by the time that, but, but by the thing that you have, imagine that you are like uh, learning English or doing something. So you need to sacrifice yourself for it. So after you finishing to sacrifice yourself for it, so you're going to have a lesson for it. Mm -hmm. So you should have, by the time that you're learning something or you're doing something, you can have good lesson and you can have bad lesson through it. Mm -hmm. So there is what we call good critics and bad critics. So by sure. the time you're doing something. Okay. So. After I finishing to learn English, I said, okay, now I have to start something and I have to do something better, which is going to create my life. Because imagine that I spent a lot to, a lot of time learning English and then I do not create anything with it. So this is something that I'm not, yeah. I, I did in vain. Oh, imagine right. that you're learning English. After you finish to learn English, you just stop and then you don't do anything. You yeah. just do it. And then you should start with, with something. You should initiate something in order for you to go forward. Perfect. Tell us about this transition right now from being an English student to an English teacher. What was that transition for you? Okay, so when I was learning English, um, I remember when I was in book two, book three, um, I was really like... Uh, to translate so i remember at this time uh, i was like starting translating for american people when they came in my church because of church that i, so you were I, that I attended you were in book, in book two? two which level so uh, when you say i was book book, in book two book book three book two book three like, so i was like, like yeah because i was very like smart low intermediate or sure something? Low, yeah. low intermediate at this time i was very very smart and then all the time like listening to, to a lot of english music so I, i i was able to translate for people wait i want to stop i want to stop here with just a second like low intermediate level and you were already able to translate for strangers yeah so tell us did you do something like i want to know if there was a secret and if you want to yeah. share yeah yeah how, did, how, how were you able to do that you know so, this is insane you know low know. intermediate <laughs> level and you're just translating tell us so the secret is like uh when you when you're like um learning english so the only secret you have is like To, uh, like listen a lot and speak a lot so if you need to speak english very well so you need to speak every day so you okay. cannot like speak english like say okay i'm gonna be uh, in a good english speaker and then you do not speak english every day you need to practice every day from days to days you need to practice and then at this time i was listening to a lot of music and then i like to speak with my friends too mm -hmm. all the time even though when i go to church sometime sometimes i go to church and then when the pastor is preaching i'm trying to translate everything in my mind right, everything right. that the pastor is saying in the uh, uh in the church i'm trying to translate it in my mind and then at this time i say okay i'm getting better now because when you are learning english or doing something when you are getting better you know sure. because it's a process so exactly. and it's, you also it's like, evaluate the process Sure, you can yeah. evaluate yourself. So okay. it's a process. You need mm -hmm. to assess yourself when you're doing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yes, so the transition was easy for you, like it, because you it, were smart. Yeah, it was not too, too, too <laughs> difficult for me because I was like, uh, I, I was smart and I like English. So mm -hmm. the idea is to speak English better. And then uh, my vision now is to be like a is to be a master, like to master English very well. This is this is all I need right now. All right. So yeah. So one thing is. Clear. Being a teacher is not something easy, right? No, teaching is not, not easy. It's not, it's not, not an easy. Thing, you no. may be able to speak mm -hmm. a language, but, but not you, being able to teach. Yeah. It. So, if, so you, if you need to teach it, you need to study a lot, do a lot of things. Quite your training, books, right? Yeah, 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 you need to train yourself a lot in order to be a great English teacher. So you teacher. attended a TEFL class, right? Sure, I did. How did that help you in your teaching career? Um, firstly, when I was like teaching English, I was not able to really like, uh, to, I, I was not able to hold a class yes. like perfectly. Class so, management. So like, yeah, I was not able to manage the lesson, class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the way that I I should fix my class, the way that I should teach the students, like it was not able, I was not able to make a lesson plan. After I finished to attain the TFL class, I began to be able to um, have a lesson plan and then working very well in order to to satisfy the students. And then after, after this, when the student like say, okay, I was a student of yourself, So yeah, so that's today you can really talk about me because the way that I was, I like, I, I was very, very, very smart at this point because the the lesson plan really helped me, and then I was able to manage my class very well. All right, so you teach more effectively, right? Sure, yeah, yeah. perfect. So um, I don't, you know, I know you're such an humble guy, but I just want to ask you, what do what do you think sets you apart from other teachers? Well, this is a very <laughs> beautiful question. <laughs> 
That's a All very, right, tell that's me. A, that's a very, uh, very beautiful question. So what sets me apart from the other teachers is the strength that I have. Okay. So I am able to discover out my strength and my weakness. So okay. you need to be able to discover out what you're good at and what you're not good at. Mm -hmm. So I know that I really, really work on my pronunciation. This is the first thing. Mm -hmm. I do work on this. And then... Um, I knew that uh, I practice more often mm -hmm. and then um, I sacrifice myself a lot for it. And what I can say is that I'm not really like a booster, like a boost myself. I need to boost myself. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 only thing, the only thing I know is that I stay calm. I stay on myself. You're so humble. sure, I like consider myself to be humble. So um, this is it. So what, what I do is that what I can do, I say, yes, I can do it. For example, if I'm teaching a class, a student just asks me a word. If I don't, if I don't know it, I say okay, maybe after class or something like that. But there are some other teachers. But some you, keep, teachers, you keep your promise, right? But, yeah, you bring it back but, after but class. But I bring it back after <laughs> class. But some teachers, what they do, they say okay, yeah. I'm gonna give you it, and then they just give a bad word or Definitely. like a wrong word. So this is this that's is. my strength, and then I would do work on this because I remember when I was learning English, my teacher, but the first teacher that I had, I remember the the passions of the verb to be. Uh, it was I was, and the teacher just told me I was that was a mistake I'm and just pretty I, sure I, that you spent a lot of time using yeah, it yeah and then I spent a lot of time Crazy. using I was I was and sometimes Insane. I remember when I remember one time that I was speaking to an American and I say I was something like that I remember I say I was and the American said what do you say I said I was I was what was that and you were emphasizing and then like I said come on <laughs> I was so surprised at this time I said come on how come he says I was and then I said come on um, I need to I need to know what's happening and they said it's that I was finally when the, the American understood what I was saying he said no it's not that I was it is I was Crazy. and then I spent a lot of time to correct this and finally I corrected mm -hmm. this is it so the teacher if you give a bad thing to the student it's going it's, going, the to be, it's going to last for a long, yeah, the, long time the yeah, teacher so, is the model so yeah, watch Sure. Say, it's like when you're learning, sure. Yeah. When you're learning a language, it's like a baby was learning to, how to speak. You know, uh, uh, when a baby is learning how to how to talk, so it's very, very, very difficult because the first thing that you you sit in front of the the, the baby, that baby is going to keep it. So once he keep, and that baby keeps it, so it's going to be very like uh, actively every day that the, the the baby is going to say that word. It was very difficult for me in order to like correct the mistake that I that I that I made. So mm. and this is the same mm -hmm. picture for someone. Who's sure, this English. is it. Yeah, exactly. So when uh, when somebody asks something to me i pay attention if i don't know it i just take some note and then after i bring it back perfect, perfect. instead of giving bad things yeah so mm -hmm. now let's just um talk a little bit about uh, um this um how long had you been teaching before you decided to you know start let's say but i'm let, when you say okay i'm gonna do my thing now i'm gonna start with my own english school and everything yeah so, um, so vocational school. i was like teaching english three years before mm -hmm. i started my own english institute mm -hmm. so what, what why I did that is because I wanted to evaluate myself to see if the stu if, if do many people know about me what do they say good about me do they say good things about me I would just want to know about the critics mm -hmm. good critics and bad critics because there's um, good critics they're going to build you up but the sure. bad critics is going to break you up, break you down mm -hmm. you know I was like listening so when they say teacher you said as a good teacher I would I like the way he teaches uh, I like the way he speaks English okay so I said okay now yeah, I'm that, yeah, that, that I you just have my own uh, confidentiality from the people. This is it. That is, this is what I was like looking for. Uh, I was looking for the confident, and then finally I see that they believe me and they trust me, and then they say, "Okay." I say, "Okay, now I can start my own my own English institute." And so then, you see the opportunity and you just jump. yeah, because it was okay. a vision. You know, my English school's name is One Vision Institute, sure. so it, this is a vision. My my vision is not like uh, because I see the world. I don't see like uh, just like a small amount of people, but I see a big amount of people. I see the whole world. I see the young men, young women like that are that are speaking English that are like trying to do something. Because me, I I remember when I was learning English, I didn't have enough opportunity in order to go to learn English. But I say okay, as I didn't have enough uh, enough opportunity in order to learn English, and then I say okay, now I should help others. I should like do all my best in order to boost somebody else that. Who's interested about like learning English or not only English, something else, you know? Yeah. That's why I start my 
on English school, it is One Vision Institute. So you were it was learned, One Vision. So you were learning English with a vision. Sure. And later, and then, and later, later I be, yeah, I began, I began your, my school uh, One Vision. Perfect. Yeah, One Vision for the whole per- world. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Perfect. And everything is going well so far. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. Tell us though, how would it be different for you if you didn't, uh, you know, learn English? So, uh, without English, it w- my life would be uh, very difficult because English helps me a lot, speci- specifically in like translating. Mm-hmm. So, translation, so it really helps me because okay. imagine that you are a great um, English translator. Mm-hmm. So, by the time that you are translating, so you earn a lot of money. Mm-hmm. That depends about the organization that you are working with. And then uh, sometimes I earn 100 US dollars per day and sometimes 200 per day. That depends about the organization. Do you hear, guys? Do you hear that? <laughs> If you were learning English, man, you better take it seriously. Put your back into it, you know? You said he's making 100 US dollars a day when he's translating. Sure. That depends okay. about the organization. <laughs> that depends about the organization. And then um, sometimes uh, you just work, um, even though you work with um, for 50 US dollars per day, you earn money. Money. Definitely, you earn sure, money sure, because sure. learning English for me is a profession here in Haiti. I was it's like, an asset. I, yeah, yeah, I was like saying that to all of my students. If you learn English here in Haiti, so it is like uh, I can say it is a profession mm-hmm. because in Haiti you can have a uh, you can have a great job with your English. If you mm-hmm. go to Dominican Republic or, mm-hmm. or some other countries, you can like uh, have a great job with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I say okay by learning English, so I can earn a lot of money, and this is why I started to learn English and and and, and give all myself in learning it. If you had to choose between teaching English and translating, I'd bet I'd definitely choose translating <laughs> because you're making more money <laughs> because I earn oh, okay. much more money. Good. Let's go back into that door. So as a qualified and experienced teacher, what is the best way for a student to improve his English? So the first thing that a student needs to um, to do in order to speak English, the first thing you need is motivation. So right. you need to motivate yourself a lot for learning it. The first thing is motivation. And the second thing is um, dedication. So what do you right. dedicate yourself for? Mm-hmm. So where would you like to go? So the, 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 the fourth thing is, um, I mean, the third thing is, is a vision. So learning English, not only like, uh, it's not, it's not only English. I can say for something else. If you want to do something, you need to have a motivation. You need to motivate yourself first. And the second, and the other thing I can say is love. When you're learning English, you need to take yourself to it. So um, not only like you are learning every day, like for example, you go to learn English in the morning or in the afternoon. So after you come back in the afternoon, you just put all your stops away and you do not study, you do not practice. So to you, have, practice, you need to have a way to go though. Yeah, you yeah. need to practice. You need to quack yourself a lot for it yeah. because it is a process. Learning something is a process. So you start from the beginning to where you want to go. All right. So what would be your advice though? Your last, that's, this is like, kind of advice the answer to this question but if you have to say one last thing to anyone who is listening to the show now particularly the english learners why would it be i want to thank everyone everyone that was listening to the broadcast the only thing uh, i want to say to you guys who are listening to the broadcast is that you want to learn english do you really want to learn english do you want to speak english so if you want to do that the only thing is start doing it right now is not i want to speak english and you don't do anything start doing it start making it so the thing that you want to do start doing it right now don't don't leave anything for tomorrow don't put off till tomorrow what you can do today so start from what start with what we want to do today and then so you can go where you want to go perfect keep your vision thank you very much dear listeners this was Yusel Kalisme, an English teacher, the director of One Vision Institute at Raoul the Teacher's Class, a podcast made for the EFL learners and with the EFL learners in the aim to teach them English and to teach them into English. Now, this series of episodes are made in the aim to motivate you who, who is learning English today and who certainly intend to become a teacher in the future and uh, do anything you want with that language because as you sell mentioned this language is a profession is an asset for every single Haitian so we're going to take a short break and right after that you sell is going to present a class so he's going to talk about phonetics stick around to know when each episode is going to be released we are going to ask you to like our Facebook page, Raoul the Teacher's Class. Raoul the Teacher as one word. Thank you so much.
Well, guys, uh, this is Teacher Yusel. Uh, they call me Baby Yusel. And sometimes I got people, they call me Teacher Yus. And that's how they call me, okay? So right now, I'm just going to give you a great introduction about the the. IPA. IPA is the International Phonetic Alphabet. International Phonetic Alphabet. So in the phonetics, so we have the phonetics is divided into two parts. So we have the first part, it is mode of tongues, and the second part is diphthongs. So the, the mode of tongues is the sound that we have, like just simple sound. And then we have the diphthongs. So we have like uh, diphthongs, they, they have compound sound. Monothongs, they have simple sound, and diphthongs, they have compound sound. So, in the English um, American phonetics, so they, they, they divide it into two parts. So, we have monothongs and diphthongs. So, we also have vowels and we have consonants. So, we have about 20 vowel sounds, and also we have 24 consonants. So, I'm just going to give you a short introduction about the sounds. We are going to see two sounds together in the vowel sounds. We're going to see the sound E and the sound A. For the sound E, we have, for example, I can pronounce like C, T, okay, free, feel. So, this is the sound E. If you want to have the sound E, is when you see two E, like E, E. Okay, so it pronounces like e. You just stress on it. E, for example, feet. Okay, feel, feel. You just you don't you don't want to say like you don't have to say just feel. Okay, you say feel. You just stress on it because you have two e e e. All right. So we have the second way that you got you can have the the sound e is when you see e a. If you see e a, for example, meat. You can say, uh, for example, you can say meat, beat. You don't stress on it. So you just say meat, beat. For example, I say, um, today I just want to ha have some meat, okay? I just want to have some meat, meat. And the third way we can have the sound E is when we see E, I. For example, receive, receive. I, I receive a message. I receive a message, for example. I receive a message. So in receive, you see R E C E I V E. E I, you see E I together, it sounds like E. And also, we have the sound E is when we see I E. I E, for example, believe, believe. Okay, B E L I E I E V E. Okay, believe. This is how we have the sound E. And then I can say, I believe in God. I believe in you. I believe in my mother. I believe in my father. Okay, you just have the sound E. And also, we have uh, the sound E is when we see E, a consonant, and E. E, consonant, E. For example, these these we have these it runs like these th when you see th you just like up in your mouth you put your tongue between your teeth you pronounce like these 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 are these are my pins these are my pins these are my stops okay so it runs like these it is when we see e consonant e it runs, um, for example t h e s e e s e e s e s is a consonant e s e okay so the sound is when you see e consonant e so the other way that we can have uh, the sound e is when we see the word final by um finishes by um a y following by a consonant for example um party party you can say guilty guilty t it, it finishes by y following by a consonant and also we have the sound e is when we see that the word finishes by ik Ik, for example, critique, critique, boutique, critique. This is how we can have the sound E. Let's go for sound A. So we have the sound A. Most common is I. The most common is I, where you see I. For example, sit, S I T, sit. It pronounced like sit. And we also have is. It's not my name, is, it's my name is is because when you you pronounce ease for example you see my name is is means something else it means to be comfortable or something like that but you don't have to say my name is but you say my name is all right so we have the sound a when we see u e um u i sorry u and i for example build build 
¿ok? Guilty, guilty, build, ¿ok? You, they, they don't say, you, you don't have, they just say building or build, it's build, building, building, guilty, guilty. Great. We have the sound A, we have the sound A when we see Y between two consonants. For example, system, system, S, S, Y, S, T, E, M, system, symbol, symbol, S, Y, M, B, O, L, sympathy, 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 okay? Now you, you have the sound A when you see Y between two consonants. Let's go for some words. Uh, we have feel, 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 I feel good. You need to say I feel good. It's not I feel good. It's I feel good. And we have beat, okay? So I beat, I beat it, or I beat it. I beat the drum. It beats me, okay? You don't have to say he beat. If you say beat, you say something else. Beat is the past tense of the verb to bite, okay? So you say wheel, wheel. You don't say I will go to church tomorrow. Or, I will go to school tomorrow. It's I will. You don't say I will, but you say I will. Wheel is the thing that we use in a car, like uh, when the th the steering wheel. You say steering wheel, something like that for the car. It's like a tool in a car. So you say, we have is. It's I. Is it's not my name is, but it's my name is. For example, you say I'm at ease. That means I'm comfortable. I'm good. I'm at ease. And we have sheep. Okay, you say sheep. Um, the car is sheep. You don't say the car is ship because if you say ship, you say something else. Sh ship is C H I P. And then we have did. Did you go to school tomorrow? No, it's not good. It's uh, did you go to school because I it's pronounced like a. Okay, deed means something else. Deed means when you do a good work, something which is good, okay? A good work or a bad work. This is deed, okay? Something that you produce. Okay, thank you very much. It was Teacher Yourself. Thank you very much. Next time. Um, dear listeners, this was Teacher Yusel Kalisme, and he was presenting to you the IPA. This is Gawa, the teacher's class, and we had a great time with Teacher Yusel. Teacher Yusel, one last word. Uh, what I can say to everyone is that, like, always keep the vision up. So do not put, do not let it down. So what you want to do, just try and um, um, create time for it. And then if you want to go forward, as I was saying before, like, take your time, take your time and go with people. Don't go alone. If you want to go further, go with people. Do not go alone. Yusel Kalisme is a translator, an English teacher, also the director of One Vision Institute. If you need him, call him in 509-3129-8937. One more time, 509-3129-8937. This was Raul the Teacher's Class with your host, Mr. Raul. Love you so much and catch you next time for another episode of this tremendous podcast, Raul, the teacher's class. Thank you. Peace. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.